Uh, morning, everybody. You're very welcome, and particularly those who are from far and from near visiting us today. You're very, very welcome, and we hope you you uh, enjoy your stay with us during this service. Um, just some announcements. First of all, announcement sheets for September are available in the foyer, so please read them for any upcoming events, etc. There's a brave number there and extend right through September and onwards. Uh, we also have still the sheets available for volunteers that we ask for for cleaning rota, readings and intercessory prayer. So if anybody didn't hear that last week, if you want to and you're feel able and willing, please have a look at them and if you wish to sign up for them. And thank you for those already signed up. We have a brave number uh, and uh, we really appreciate you coming forward to volunteer. If you have any queries at all, contact either Michael or myself and uh, we'll provide any further information that you might need. Uh, the rota, by the way, will be formulated, <laughs> ready to start in the month of September. So we'll, we'll contact you if you're uh, and provide the information in regards to the cleaning rota. Uh, just another one, reminder of uh, the service for healing and wellness that will be held here on Sunday the 3rd of September at 7 p.m. Uh, Alan and Ruth will be leading us in that and we look forward to that. And also just a reminder that uh, storehouse donations for September will be tea bags, 80 packs or smaller they're looking for. So thank you again for all those of you who contribute to those donations. Uh, I think that's about all I have for you for now. I'll pass on to Alan. Who have travelled from near and far. Did you see the third point in that list? I'm pointing up here. I'm the, if you haven't put your name down for the prayer rota or reading, you'll be paid a visit. That's that's what I read up there. <laughs> I didn't. That's, I didn't think that happened in Glenburn. But if you don't put your name down, you'll you'll be getting a visit. <laughs> There's some Lisburnians over here, and it's somebody's birthday next week. Trish. <laughs> 21, Trish. Alan, you get a wee packet. You deserve it, mate. <laughs> Wilma. <laughs> Just to let you know, I tortured the life out of Wilma, didn't I? Still do. Don't I torture the life out of you? Yes. Well, some visitors from across the pond, as we say, you're very welcome. You'll be going home, back across the pond, to say, you know what I got in that church in Belfast? A wee packet of Haribo. I don't know if they have them over here, neck of the woods. I'm glad I came. <laughs> You'll not be able to sleep tonight. Any birthdays over here? This side of the house, anything to celebrate? Nothing? Nothing? Oh, good grief. Sam, anything to celebrate? Next Sunday, anniversary. Are you, are you going to be here? Yeah. If you don't turn up next Sunday, I might have to pay you a wee visit. So. <laughs> what about over here, my wee people? Yeah, she starts school on Thursday. Oh. oh yes. Do you want a wee packet? I'd pack one for you right there. How many mummies and daddies are going, yes, school starts. <laughs> Just before we actually commence the service, I'm sure we've all had busy weeks. You get all sorts of phone calls, there's all sorts of things and problems and goings on that are happening to us. But I wonder if we could just start the service with a, a, a moment's silence, just to leave all the problems, all the yuck and all that nonsense of the world outside the door. It'll be waiting for us whenever we go back out. And it's more or less to prepare ourselves to be in the presence of God and let him minister to us, to our bodies, our souls, and our spirits. But if we can just bow our heads, just close our eyes, and just sit in a moment of silence.
Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, we welcome you into our midst. Lord, meet us at our point of need. In Jesus' name. Amen. I want to inject a wee passage of scripture, and it's where Jesus asked Peter a very direct question. Uh, he asked, actually asked the disciples, there's two questions. Who do the people say I am? And then there's this really personal question he asked Peter. Peter, who do you say I am? And this is the answer that he gives. You are the Messiah, the Son of the living God. That's the answer that Peter gave. And Jesus says, Peter, you're absolutely right. Hold on to that thought as we sing. We're going to sing two pieces at the name of Jesus and then faithful one. If you're able to stand up for both hymns, uh, please do.
Let us pray. Loving Heavenly Father, we thank you for this day. We thank you for the freedom and the privilege to come into this church to give you our praise and worship. Father, we have a lot to be thankful for. We thank you for the past. We thank you for the present. And we thank you for the things that you have prepared for us in the future. But Father, thank you for your son, Jesus. Thank you for the relationship that we can have with him right now. Thank you for all the promises that we discover in your word. And thank you for the promise that you will never leave us nor forsake us. But Lord, we know that we get it wrong. We say things and do things that we shouldn't. We go places where we shouldn't. And we leave things undone. But Lord, you have even made provision for that. You allow us to come into your presence, confess our sins, and we can leave this place knowing that we are in a right relationship with you. And Father, we would do that right now. In the silence of this prayer, we would confess all those things that we know about and maybe all those wee habits that we don't know about. Lord, we ask that you would reveal them to us. Father, hear our prayers. Lord, we can approach you with a boldness in our hearts because your word tells us that we can. And when we confess our sins, you hear them, you forgive them, and you keep no record of them. Father, be with us now. Open our hearts, our eyes, our ears to hear what you have to say to us. Let us leave this place knowing that we have done business with the risen Lord. For we ask it in Jesus' name who taught us to say as a family, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. My children have disappeared on me today. I know they sit over that neck of the woods over there at the front. So this question I'm going to ask the children, who is that man? There's a picture going to come up on the screen and I'm going to ask you guys the same question. Who is that man? But don't be shouting out. Well, that's William Tell. <laughs> but that's not the man I'm talking about here. Dennis, would you go to the next slide, please? Oh, right. We're having a, a technical problem here. Right, I've got that. Do you know that I was in this church twice this morning? I double checked that I had this. This one's my speaker. And I double checked that I had it in my bag. So I went, down, went to my bag and I checked and it was in my bag. So halfway down the hill, here's me, did I put that speaker in my bag? So I took it off my back. How do we look in? And I went, yes, I did. It was in the bag the whole time. Do you know what I forgot to bring? my phone, because I need this to play music through that. <laughs> Who is that man? If I were to put a, a picture of a mask up on the screen, which I don't have, and ask you, who is that man? There's probably people on the internet saying, who's that idiot up the front there? Never mind, who's that man? There's Americans going back to America. It's a good grief. You want to see the big idiot we saw in Belfast? But we're not defeated. I'm going to play, play a piece of music. I want you to go back to your childhood. Uh, 
For the younger people, you mightn't say, who's he talking about? Never heard of this guy. Very famous. When I was a wee fella, this, this guy was famous. And once I play this music, if you know who it is, I want you to put your hand up. Don't be shouting out who it is. So just let me get in here. You'll know straight away. Okay? Hopefully I'm going to press play here and it's going to come out through the, the music box. Who is that man? Anyone? For those that know, you'll just be about to get on your horse. You guys are as bad as me. <laughs> I had a wee PowerPoint thing done here. So the Lone Ranger, there was a new version of the Lone Ranger done. It was Johnny Depp. He was Tonto. And another guy was the Lone Ranger. And he had this mask on. And as soon as he put it on, no one knew who it was. Somebody said to me, Alan, I wonder who you were wearing these glasses this morning. <laughs> it's me. So I'm wearing my glasses because my eyesight's a bit fuzzy in the distance. But the Lone Ranger... There's a wee joke about the Lone Ranger too, I know. The Lone Ranger's on his horse and he trots up to Tonto and he sees bins tied over the side of his horse. And Tonto says, Yo, where are you going with those bins tied over your side of your horse? And the Lone Ranger says, To the dump, to the dump, to the dump, dump, dump. Right? <laughs> the Lone Ranger was a good guy. He, he sorted out all the bad guys. He addressed injustice, and at the end of the, the show, somebody stood and went, who is that man? Now, there's a wee story in the Bible that I'm going to talk about later, about Jesus, and it's to do with the question that Jesus asked Peter, who do people say I am? I actually had a picture of Paisley here as well, just to, and I had a picture of the Pope to show you, just to, to balance it all out. Jesus went about healing the sick, giving sight to the blind, helping the lame to walk, casting out demons, and he preached good news. And people were saying, who is that guy? Who is that man? And whenever Peter, whenever Jesus asked the disciples, guys, who do people say I am? Some people think, thought he was John the Baptist. Some people thought he was Elijah. Some people thought he was Jeremiah or one of the other prophets. I'm going to stretch that a wee bit further. Some people just thought he was a good teacher. Somebody thought, some people think he was a wee bit a good religious leader like the Pope. That's what have got your blood going here, I know that, over in East Belfast. But it would have come back at you if people thought he was a good political leader as well, Big Ian. But the question still stands for us. Here in Glenburn Methodist Church, who do you say I am? That's the question Jesus puts to each and every one of us. And I want you to hold that thought because we're going to probably elaborate a bit more on it during the sermon. Who do you say I am? Peter gave the right answer. You are the Messiah, the Son of the living God. Let us pray. Father, we thank you for your son. We thank you that Jesus was and is the person we have been waiting for this whole time. Father, we thank you for the relationship that we can have with him right now. Father, open our ears to hear more about your son and the sacrifice that he made for each and every one of us. For we ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. Now... We're going to sing, Rosemary, You Are the King of Glory.
Your offering for the work of the Lord will now be received. Let us pray. <clears throat> Loving Heavenly Father, in our prayers for others this morning, we continue to think about the countries that have been ravaged by natural disasters. We think of the people in Hawaii that have lost their lives and the families that are still coping with the devastation. We think of countries in Europe that are coming to terms with fires and uh, natural disasters as well. And Lord, we would pray that all the relief agencies, the help that's being poured into those countries, that it gets to the right people, that the, the people who, that have been scarred by death, by injury, uh, and an emotional hurt, that you could touch them and help them get through this ordeal. And Lord, we think of countries that are at war with each other at the moment. We think especially of uh, what's happening in, inside Russia and outside Russia, uh, the, with Ukraine, we think of other countries that are uh, on the brink of civil wars and other countries that are beating their chests and threatening each other with violence. Father, we would ask you, that you would just intervene, uh, inject a bit of common sense into each country's leaders, help them to get round a table and talk to bring an end to the killing, the destruction and the mayhem. And Lord, we come home here to Northern Ireland our own wee country, when we would ask that you would inject a lasting peace into us, that you would bring an end to the, the hatred, the hostilities between one tribe and another. And we thank you for the peace that we've had over the marching season. But Lord, we pray for your peace that goes beyond all understanding. We ask that you would just inject that into our hearts and into the hearts of people that are hard. And Lord, we pray for this church. We pray for every person gathered here this morning, every person that's uh, represented on our congregational register. Father, we would ask that you would just bless them, help them with all their troubles, their turmoils, their illnesses, their aches and pains and mental anguish. Father, we would ask that you would just draw close to each of us. And we pray for those who have lost loved ones recently, or maybe going back as far as 20 years. Lord, you know the hurt and the pain that maybe an anniversary brings up. Lord, you can heal the brokenhearted. And we pray for those whose minds have been uh, wounded, people that are struggling just to put their feet on the floor each morning as they get out of bed. Lord, we ask that you would just inject physical strength, emotional strength, and spiritual strength into them to help them get through their day. And Lord, we pray for the rest of us, 
that just need your help. Lord, the list is never ending. But Lord, you know each and every one of us. You know what makes us tick. But Lord, help us to put our faith and our trust in you. For we ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. We're in the book of Matthew again, uh, chapter 16, and I'm reading from verse uh, 13. And the, the title in my Bible says, Peter declares that Jesus is the Messiah. Matthew chapter 16, uh, reading from verse 13. And it says, When Jesus came to the region of Caesarea Philippi, he, he asked his disciples, who do people say the Son of Man is? That's another way of saying, who do people say I am? They replied, some say John the Baptist, others say Elijah, and still others, Jeremiah, or oh, you're one of the prophets. But what about you, he asked, who do you say I am? And Simon Peter answered, you are the Messiah, the Son of the living God. And Jesus replied, Blessed are you, Simon, son of Jonah, for this was not revealed to you by flesh and blood, but by my Father in heaven. And I tell you that you are Peter, and on this rock I will build my church, and the gates of Hades will not overcome it. I will give you the keys of the kingdom of heaven, Whatever you bind on earth will be bound in heaven, and whatever you loose on earth will be loosed in heaven. Then he ordered his disciples not to tell anyone that he was the Messiah. Last week, we listened to a conversation between Jesus and a Canaanite woman. And if you can remember, this woman came up to Jesus and she was pleading for, for mercy for her daughter's life because she was possessed by a demon and she was suffering terribly. And between that encounter and where we are at today, a lot has happened. Jesus has fed another 4,000 people. He's had a bit of a to-do with the religious leaders of the day, the Pharisees and the Sadducees. These, they're demanding, if you are who you say you are, give us a sign. Give us a sign. Give us proof that you are who you say you are. And then Jesus warns the people. He says, guys, be on your guard against these people, against these Pharisees and Sadducees. Be on, their, on your guard about what to teach. And this leads us to where we're at today. There's two questions being asked here today. Who do the people say I am? And that really personal question, who do you say I am? I know I read out of the book of Matthew, but I want to inject something out of the book of Mark. And this is a bit of a challenge. If you were to go home and read the book of Mark from start to finish in one sitting, you will discover that there's 16 chapters. And the book of Mark is split into two. And the book of Mark starts off, it's full of action. Immediately, you'll, see, you'll hear and read that word. Immediately, this happened. Immediately, that happened. Uh, Jesus immediately went from this village to that village. He shared the good news. He healed the sick. And then immediately, he gave sight to the blind. He cast out demons. He fed hungry people, he calmed storms, and he tells these parables. Just one thing after the other happens. And right in the middle of Mark, the book of Mark, chapter 8, and I'm going to write the Pacific, verse 29, the mood becomes tense, and there's a sense of urgency about what Jesus is doing. There's a sense of danger in the air. And from Mark chapter 8, verse 29, Jesus begins to talk about his suffering in Jerusalem. And he warns those people who are saying that we are your followers. He's saying, guys, it's not going to be easy. It's not going to be easy for you. 
But going back to the question in Matthew chapter 16, who do the people say I am? And he's asking that question because the disciples have eyes and ears. They're listening to the mood and the words of the people about them. And the disciples respond quite easily. They have a, quite a lot of speculations who the people are saying that, who Jesus is. Well, Jesus, some say you're John the Baptist. If you remember, John the Baptist was killed by Herod. Some people think you're Elijah. Some people say you could be the prophet Jeremiah or one of the other prophets. To be honest, some other people think you're the devil. But some people think you're a good teacher as well. You're a religious leader or you're a political leader. And to be honest, some people think you're a lunatic. Those are the sort of answers that Jesus got. And then Jesus makes it personal. Who do you say I am? Guys, who do you say? I've listened to what you've just said there. Who do you say I am? And Peter's response, I love Peter to bits. Peter has a disease called foot and mouth disease. Sometimes he opens his back without engaging his mind. But on this occasion, he gets it absolutely right. Gee, Peter, who do people say I am? You're the Messiah. You're the son of the living God. Some versions of the Bible say you are the Christ, the son of the living God. But I want to give you a longer version of that answer. Peter was saying, you are the Messiah. You are the anointed one of God who was promised in the prophets by the prophets in scripture. You are the, the anointed one of God who will usher in God's kingdom on, on earth. And Jesus' answer, or Peter's answer, was confirmed by Jesus. Blessed are you, gives him his full title. Blessed are you, Simon, son of Jonah. But this news was not uh, revealed to you by man. It was revealed to you by my Father in heaven. Jesus was confirming to Peter that the process of understanding who he is cannot be discovered by your intellectual reasoning or investigation on its own. And I'm starting here this morning saying, yes, head knowledge is good, but that question, when it's presented to us, needs to be answered from your heart. We can all give intellectual answers, or we can all give answers that you think other people want to hear. But whenever that question comes to us here this morning in Glenburn, Jesus is asking us, who do you say I am? And that question needs to be answered from your heart. And as we consider our response, let me just say that no one else can answer this question for you. We might be saying, is Jesus merely what we want him to be here on a Sunday morning? Or is he truly who he says he is? Jesus is not concerned about us giving him the right answer. He's concerned about the condition of all of our hearts here this morning. Peter could have given an intellectual answer, but Jesus discerned what was going on in his heart and he knew that Peter truly believed that he was the Messiah, the son of the living God. And Jesus knows what we believe here this morning. We might have an intellectual answer. We're giving this answer in public, but the Lord knows exactly what's going on on the inside. He wants us to know who he is. 